Welcome to the 2022 Heart Baseball Media Day. I'm your host, Stephen Davis. Right now, we're excited to be joined by the longtime head coach at William Penn University, Mike Laird. Coach, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you doing, man? Glad doing to be well. here. Doing well. We appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, hard to believe, but you're headed into your 40th year now as the head coach there at Penn. How excited are you and your team to get this season off and rolling? Uh, we're, we're real excited, actually. We think we've uh, got a good squad together and they're really looking forward to it. We're tired of, you know, being inside like everybody else is, but we do have a nice indoor facility, which helps us get a lot of stuff done. But, um, you know, we got to get got to get ready by uh, the 12th, 12th and 13th. We're over at Kansas Westland. It'll come up quickly. You guys had a, a good year a year ago. What's it going to take to have another winning season this year and uh, try to move up a little bit in the hard standings? Um, well, the you know, the three general areas, obviously, are, you know, the pitching, uh, defense, and, and offense. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we, you know, although we lost a lot of guys, particularly on the infield last year, and we, uh, we did lose our top three uh, starting pitchers as far as uh, weekend starters are concerned. And that's a little bit of a concern, but we've got some young guys and a couple guys that are back that are pretty good, so are, are decent. And uh, it's just going to, you know, I think our defense will be solid, and uh, I think offensively it might be a little bit better. Does your team have some goals they've set for 2022? Anything uh, specific you guys are looking to achieve? Oh, yeah. I mean, we always we always want to get back to the national tournament. Uh, that's that's a big goal. It's, it's tough to do. Uh, we've kind of been on the outside looking in the last two or three years, and, you know, it's not a good feeling to not quite get there, you know, be close to and uh, so I hope hopefully we could overcome that and, uh, you know, get back to that. Uh, that. That's a big thing. We won the league in 2019 and then we had COVID in 20 and uh, had a good club. And then last year we had a good club, too, but we were just a little bit short at the end, I think. Take us through some of your baseball philosophies, how you want your teams to play. If you get your ideal team, what does it look like out there on the field? Um, ideal team. Uh, of course, it depends year to year. I mean, I, if, if I could have my druthers, I mean, uh, I talk to our guys continually about uh, winning offensive and defensive situations. If you do win the offensive and defensive situation, you're probably winning the game. Uh, and that involves a lot of things. I mean, on defense, it's uh, pitching, first pitch strikes. It's making all the routine plays. It's all that sort of stuff. Uh, offensively, it involves an awful lot of things like getting runners over at the right time and and opportune uh, hitting, you know, key hitting and base running. And uh, the biggest thing is, I, in my opinion, is the key is, uh, is consistency. And uh, if you can remain consistent and not ride that roller coaster too much, not get too excited when you win a game, a big game, and not get too down if you don't, don't get one you think you should have, uh, you know, it's a long season. It's not a long season, but there's a lot of games. And uh, so – you know, I, consistency, and I, I've got uh, I've got some great guys on this team. We have a great culture, and I think that'll feed into that. All right, let's hear about who some of these guys are on the team. Uh, we need some names now. Well, let's go to the mound. Let's start with the pitchers. Who are some of your top guys going to be uh, throwing the ball here in twenty two? Um, we got a uh, guy last year that threw uh, a lot of innings for us. I think he threw forty nine innings at seventy one Ks. His name's Brian Thomas, and he was one of our weekend guys. He's He's capable of having a very, very good year. So he's definitely, uh, you know, starting weekend guy. Uh, a guy named T Tyler uh, Gregory is a senior. Uh, he's beaten a lot of, a lot of teams, great off-speed stuff. And uh, so he'll, he'll be in the mix. Uh, Stetson Denning is probably our key reliever for four years now. This is his fourth year. And Michael Carr is another player that uh, – lefty that's, that's really – you know, that's really solid and we can use them in key relief situations. Uh, those are the primary guys. We do have a couple other guys that we've been looking at. I did not get any transfer arms in. So we've got a lot of young guys that are going to have some opportunities that they might not have, you know, in, in a normal year. Uh, but I'm kind of curious, not curious, but I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how those guys progress. So uh, got you know, two or three guys that have had a lot of experience. Then we got some other guys that are going to have to work their way you know, through some games, and I think they'll be solid by the time conference comes around. Let's flip it around, talk about the bats. Who are some guys you're counting on to give you some quality ABs this year and uh, be productive in the lineup? 
Yeah, uh, I would say probably our main guy, and he's been this for three years. This is his fourth year now. Is Tanner Badir. He's first team all park player last year. Uh, he's a legit 400 hitter for three years. The guy's a outstanding player. He's a, he's a 40 student. You know, I don't I don't even think. Uh, you know, he's just uh, he's an outstanding human being. In addition to be a great player, he's probably going to be on the mound some for us too. He's lefty. Uh, he was a starting pitcher for us actually as a freshman and did well. I think he was five and two. Uh, so he's going to, we're going to bring him back, I think. Uh, you know, so he's kind of back there in the weeds, so to speak. He hasn't pitched for, uh, very much for a couple of years because he's been, you know, kind of our three hitter, our main guy in the lineup. But other hitters uh, that we have are Alex Fisher. Alex Fisher was a gold glove guy in center field. He, he's a plus athlete. He's, he's somebody that can really go get it. You know, he'll climb the wall or run into the wall. He'll do whatever he's got to do. Um, Soren Graverson hit nine home runs last year, but he had some injury issues. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, could hit 15 or 20 if he stays healthy from the left side. Big kid, um, you know, 6'4", 220 type guy. And uh, Frankie Aparicio, uh, who played a lot of shortstop and a little bit of left field. He's a good player. He can run, plays uh, mostly infield, a little bit of left. Uh, Jamison Hart. Uh, starting right fielder, uh, another big lefty, 6'3", about 235 kid. Yeah, he's got some pop. He was our four hitter in 20 before we got shut down with COVID. But uh, he kind of dropped off a little bit last year, but he's a guy that's uh, definitely dangerous. So those are some of the returning guys. And uh, we have some new guys, too, that look look to fill some uh, positions that we lost on the infield. So Always got to fill in with the new guys. Always got to oh, yeah. fill in. Oh, yeah. So, um, but some of those guys are looking very, very good. I mean, we've got uh, catching wise, I think that was probably our toughest defensive position last year. And it, it, it hurt us some, to be honest about it. Our number one catcher was a big, strong kid who played a grand total of one game the whole year. And that was, he was our four hitter and uh, had a ser severe ankle injury and played one game out of 51. And so immediately we went into panic, a little bit of panic mode. Our number two guy got hurt too, got his shoulder hurt. So we were working with the number three and four catchers all year. And uh, it was a little bit, uh, it was challenging. The guys did okay, but we needed to get better there. So uh, we do have a guy in that, that is a very good catcher, catching prospect, I think, for us. His name is Alonzo Zuniga. Uh, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, he's one of the better catchers I've had in many, many years, and he will help us a lot. We've got another guy, uh, first baseman in named Justin Martinez, came in from Kirkwood Junior College, uh, big, strong kid, 6'2", about 225 kid, can really, uh, plus bat speed, he can play on the corners. Uh, Trevor Dooley uh, is an Iowa kid, lefty stick, who was at Northwest Missouri State and all state kid a couple years uh he's a good very good player too uh nate jessel uh is from solano junior college north in northern cal uh he's just a he's a he's a crazy utility guy he's probably going to be our shortstop uh, along with the, you know aparicio will play some too but jessel can play literally anywhere which is very very uh, unusual he can catch he can pitch <laughs> He can play outfield. He's just a very, very, very good baseball player and very heady. Um, the other kid uh, that's going to make a big impact, the other kid, the other guy is Tim Jean. He's from College of Lake County, uh, played for a good friend of mine up, up there, uh, Heath Cummings. And Tim Jean is a player. I think he hit about 380 or 390 for them in the two hole last year. And they went quite a ways in the tournament. Uh, really runs very, very well. He's a corner infielder, a uh, real serious kid. Again, a uh, really intelligent baseball player. So those guys are coming in, kind of replacing almost everybody we had on the infield last year that were seniors. And uh, they've done a real good job. So I'm pretty optimistic about them. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, Coach, final four questions. We're going to do uh, four here to get to know you and uh, your, your school a little bit more. All right. Okay. All right, we're going to go down to your rival first. Uh, Lou Yasinich there at uh, Grant <laughs> has announced it's going to be his – you've coached against him for four decades now. What's it been like coaching against him, and what are your thoughts on him uh, finally saying goodbye this year? Oh, man. Uh, 
Lou is such a, he, he's one in a million. He's a great guy, tremendous coach. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, just to have tremendous respect for Lou. Uh, everybody does, I think. And yeah, it's going to be a little sad when we play Grandview up at Grandview, but I know Lou, uh, <laughs> he's already told me a couple of times. Uh, he's really waiting for us, you know, <laughs> but it'll be somewhere between hugs and tears, probably, you know, playing that last time against Lou. Uh, but he is, he is a crazy competitor for all those years. He's a gentleman. He's a great guy. He's a, there aren't very many better baseball guys in the world that I I'm aware of. So that'll be, that'll be tough. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's had quite, he's going to have quite a legacy. He already has quite a legacy. So. Absolutely. Now you're an alum there at William Penn. You've been head coach for 40 years. What does William Penn University and the Oskaloosa community as a whole mean to you and your family? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long trip, although it doesn't seem like it's been long. And uh, I still, you know, I mean, I'm not up there in lose category yet but I am going to be one of the, one of the old guys, obviously when Lou's gone for sure. Yeah. But no, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's my school and, you know, very proud of it. Uh, I'd like to think we're trying to do, do it the right way here with, with recruiting guys with high character. And, uh, I think our culture's great. And, uh, it's been a it's been a trip and it's not over, you know. Uh, I don't know. Could be here another. Uh, I might try to beat lose records in the end. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but uh, you know, it's it's been a great experience and uh, it's a terrific place to be. Awesome, awesome. Can you give us a favorite memory or two from your time as a head coach? Oh my! Well, making it to the World Series, playing in the World Series is obviously a real big. Big thrill, uh, winning our first conference championship way back in 86. You know, that, that hadn't happened for a while and going to the national tournament. Uh, I've had uh, four guys make it to the big leagues. Uh, three pitchers have actually pitched in the big leagues that played for me in top five round draft kids. Uh, and then I just recently, just within the last couple of weeks, got a call from a guy that played for me named Petey Montero. And he went to Los Angeles Harbor College. He was a great student here, great player for us in 2006 and seven. Well, Petey called and he's been working his way up with the Los Angeles Dodgers. As a matter of fact, he's got a World Series ring uh, from a couple of years ago and just a tremendous kid, outstanding kid, person. Uh, like I said, he's about a 3'8 student while he was here too. He got, he got called up to the big leagues as a coach. So that was really very cool. All right, and we're wrapping things up, asking every coach in the league the same question. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when we say heart baseball? It's tough, man. It's super competitive. You can't, you can't even think about overlooking anybody. It's uh, anybody will beat anybody on a given day. And I know that sounds like an old cliche, but it's true with baseball. There's not one team in the league that you go, oh, geez, hey, man, we can play. As long as we play okay, we'll, we'll probably take two. There's no such animal out there in the, in the heart with baseball. Awesome. Coach, we appreciate the time. Good luck this season. Thank you very much. Thanks, Coach, Stephen. That's Coach Mike Laird from the William Penn Statesman.